Hi everyone, I'm Sean. And I'm Tudor. We are from Nanan Primary School's Robotics Club. I took part in the RoboCup Singapore Open 2021 and RoboCup Asia Pacific 2021 in Aichi, Japan. So this is the second year I am joining the RoboCup Challenge. This is my first time participating in RoboCup, but I'm very interested in robotics and therefore participated in this competition. This year, we are taking part in the, Robo in the RoboCup Cold Space Rescue Under 12 Challenge. The goal of this challenge is to make the robot score as many points as possible within six minutes by collecting colored objects and depositing them in the correct area to earn points. This means the robot should use its times on actions that would help it gain points and minimize actions that do not earn points or even cause it to lose points. The game is a race against time. Picking up objects, depositing them, and avoiding obstacles and traps take time. So our strategy is to make the robot complete these tasks only when necessary to make the most efficient use of time. We use three strategies to help our robot achieve this. Firstly, we made the robot ignore the trap when it is empty, but navigate more slowly around the trap when it was carrying objects. This allowed the robot to take shortcuts and cover more zones in to start collecting objects, but ensure it did not lose points after it already picked up some items. We allowed the robot to enter the blue zone when it still had capacity, but once it was fully loaded, we made it avoid the zone. This allowed the robot to pick up objects for double points in the blue zone, but ensure it did not waste time circling around in the area if it had no capacity for any more items. Lastly, we made the robot turn towards the deposit zone and only made the deposit when it was fully loaded. This guided the robot find the deposit zone more quickly and ensured that it only spent the precious 3 seconds depositing when it had the maximum number of items to be deposit. In conclusion, the score improved a lot when all three strategies were used in the same game compared when none or only one or two of these strategies were applied. We concluded that we had a winning game plan in helping the robot to maximize its time searching for objects while minimizing time spent navigating away from traps or searching blindly for the deposit zone. To make the robot deposit the items it is carrying, we need to program the color sensors to detect that it is in the deposit zone. If the left color sensor detects the deposit zone first, we made the left wheel remain stationary while the right wheel continued moving, which will make the robot turn left into the deposit zone. Once both color sensors detected that they are over the deposit zone, the wheel speed of both wheels should be reduced to zero so the robot can make the deposit. In order to control when the deposit occurs, we added an additional condition which will only allow the deposit command to be executed when the number of loaded objects was 6. If the number of loaded objects is 5 or fewer, it will drive over the deposit zone without stopping. Now please enjoy this short video of our gameplay showing three of our strategies in action. Before I start the video, we, are, we were certain that we will have a super object because we have collected one red, one cyan, and one black object. There is a good chance of creating a super plus object if we can pick up one more cyan. It is heading towards... Uh, uh, it is heading towards into a zoom full of cyan objects, so we are hoping, so we are keeping fingers crossed. But no, it picks up a red object instead. Anyway, let's see it turn into the deposit zone and make the deposit.
Does the super object appear? Yes, it does. There it is along the top wall. Let's see if the robot will pick it up. Oh no. Well, it passes by the item on the first pass. Too bad. Notice when that it goes slightly slower when it is in the area near the traps. We programmed it this way so it does not overshoot into the trap and lose all its objects. The robot now is going to make a second pass into through the top loop. And will it pick up the object? Yes! It picks up the super object this time round. Good, good job. Now it, now it just needs to make the deposit to earn extra points. You can see our strat other strategy is going. You are going to see that our second strategy is going to be at work when the robot hits to the lower half of the board. Now that it is full, it will avoid going into the blue zone. Unfortunately, it takes the long way around, but at long last, it finds its way to the deposit area and changes its load for a good bunch of points. Great job, robot! Robots that can be programmed to move around and execute actions on their own can be very use can be very useful in everyday situations, such as in cleaning the streets or inside our homes. For example, the iRobot. They can also be useful in search and rescue. When there is a building or a tunnel collapse due to an earthquake or other disaster, time is time is of the essence for saving lives of people trapped in the rubble. It is unsafe and probably also impossible for humans or rescue dogs to get into small spaces in the rubble to locate the victims. That's where search and rescue bots come in. The robotic cockroach, aka the cr the cram compressible robot, the cram compressible robot with articulated mechanisms, can be used in after any collapse building scenarios to search the rubble for any survivors. This robotic cockroach se segmented fillable shell, fillable shell enable itself to squeeze through tiny cracks or crevices like normal cockroaches. The robotic cockroach, the robotic cockroach is also able to sprawl out and run using other parts of its body instead of its feet. If we were to use the, the knowledge gained, we will add ultrasonic sensors and a steering mechanism to its body to help it detect upcoming obstacles to find to avoid. We would also we would also add a gyro sensor to detect the the vertical location of the robot, so that rescuers know the three dimensional coordinates of the robot, and might also add a death sensor so the rescuers of the ground know exactly where the robot or the body that the robot found is. We hope you have enjoyed our presentation. Thank you for watching.